Hi, welcome to chapter 8 of tutorial 1 for Cyrus. This is an appended chapter um, that we decided to include um, as we've added a new feature to the GIS mapping which is very very useful. The, the new layer uh, shows you all previous heritage cases that have been mapped and as you recall in earlier chapters we mapped heritage reports up to 2009 and are mapping heritage cases going forward. So this new feature now shows you the, the heritage cases and this sh will help you to eliminate potential duplicates um, or cases where you're not sure uh, whether it has been created on SARS um, already and uh, at times you might use the same polygons for different projects um, but uh, it should be fairly obvious to you from the, the case names if that is the case but in general your um, your map pro project areas uh, or case applications should be in, in particular locations separate uh, from the other ones so let's go and have a look at the demo case to show you where the heritage cases the GIS layer has been enabled um, for one it's on the edit view of the heritage cases and it's also on the uh, view mode of a, of a heritage case so if we look at the demo case and this user doesn't have rights to edit this case we can see under location info things look a little bit different so you'll notice the um, formerly red uh, polygons in, in the edit mode um, and then have been were um, orange when you were viewing the the map in the view mode. Um, now there's a base layer and the current view of the of the case enabled, and this is why the orange and the red have, have blended together, if you like. Um, the layer on the right is enabled by default, so this is Heritage Cases GIS. And if we browse out, you'll see the orange polygons across the country. These are all heritage cases. Uh, which have been mapped since May 2012 when Saurus went uh, live to Saurus staff. So uh, your current case still works, so the, the map still zooms, in, zooms into the, the current node, um, uh, so you, don't, you can ignore the, the other ones uh, initially. And um, this map view, because you aren't editing any um, uh, content besides the Yep. The, the as I said, the edit tools are suppressed. If you like, this means you can click on the other polygons. So I'll show you what that does. So if we click on that polygon, there's the case, and you can right-click and go to that particular case. Uh, let's take a look at these areas. These are points, so they look very large when we zoomed out. You'll notice these little points. This is because the um, point uh, type in the open layers. Uh, is uh, expanded to a very large um, balloon so that you can see that there is actually something there. If the point was very very small you wouldn't know that there, there are points to, to view in the map. Whereas the polygons remain fairly constant uh, to size. So just zoom in a bit closer and you'll see these points here, I think these refer to borrow pits and um, so the point polygon uh, point tool rather was the most appropriate way of mapping those particular cases. Um, again you can just click on them and that'll take you to the, the project. Um, you can also enable the uh, SARA reports layer and that's the reading off our map server, that's the shapefile with the reports that were mapped up to 2009. Um, so in combination if you're doing um, any research into previous reports or finding what was done um, the current one in the orange polygons and the red layer are the two layers I would use to find um, not only whether I'm mapping a new case um, but also finding previous assessments in the area that I'm interested in. If we go to the edit view or create view of um, cases that applies to both uh, you'll see there's a slight uh, difference. Uh, if we go to create the um, the polygons are, are available again, but they're not clickable. So if we try and zoom in on those two, for instance, if I click on these, nothing happens. The reason for this is that the um, editing tools have been enabled in 
this preset, this map preset. So you uh, that blocks you from uh, being able to inquire on particular features uh, on the map layer. Um, that's not a problem. If if you're mapping, the reason we've included this layer um, in the create layer is to allow you to see whether you're mapping over something else that's been done before. Um, and all you do is save the node and then view it in the uh, view mode as, as you would over here and then you can see the what it is that you, you're mapping over. And that should, should be able to eliminate most of the potential duplicates out there. Um, what we might do um, depending on how the performance of the mapping goes over the next few months is to save the current cases that have been mapped up to a certain batch so perhaps every six months or a year we might export those cases to a shapefile and serve them up on the map server and provide the case ID as the, the map label. Um, the, the reason for this is that the GS, the open layers there is a certain limitation to the number of nodes you can view at one time and I would imagine over the next few months as we start entering thousands of cases um, the query that will run every time you inquiring on the map will use up quite a lot of memory so look out for that um, it'll, it's very likely that there will be a, a, an update to this um, layer and we'll map it in a different color if we do decide to provide the current heritage cases mapped as a, as a base file, as a shape file on our geo server. Um, you'll also notice on the cases themselves we've changed a very small thing. We've added a new tab under the create case which is called case intro and we've shifted the heritage authority case type development type and the uh, agreement to the terms into their own tab. Um, this just neatens up the form um, so you don't have to see those three fields as you browse through the rest of the case. Um, and uh, that's about it. Thanks very much.